how much would one of these actually cost? Hey guys, B Snappy here. I'm here with Ian from AirCam and he's gonna tell us all about this awesome float plane behind us. How are you, Ian? Good, how are you doing today? So Ian, this looks amazing. What make and model is it? So this one, this is called a uh, AirCam Gen 2. It's based off an original design that was made for National Geographic in yeah. 1993 to fly in the Congo. And uh, it's progressed quite a way, as you can see with this one. Currently, it's, um, we have two Rotax 912 ULSs, 115 horsepower each with the big bore kits. And what is the speed and range you're getting out of this? So the range varies wildly based on your speed yeah. um, and fuel mileage on this one. So you can do anything from 37 miles an hour at stall to 110 V and E. Yeah. And mind you, you can hit 110 at half throttle because it's so overpowered. So on this plane, you actually have two motors, which are interesting. What's the benefits of having two over just one big single engine? So you can't really safely fly low with one single engine because yeah. you're always worried about if you're going to lose it. Yeah. This is the only twin in the world that can take off full gross weight on one engine. So you can fly low and slow through canyons and rivers and not worry about losing one. And that improves all the factors of safety about it. Extremely safe. We also have completely separate fuel systems, oil systems, redundant backup electrical systems. So you can fuel from two different sources if you're out in the middle of nowhere and not worry about cross-contamination between the engines. So it yeah. leaves no chance of a dual engine failure. So Ian, you're saying that they're both totally separate from each other, but they're working together. Yes, exactly. The only thing that ties them together is your hands on the throttle. Can you tell us a bit about the floats? So how does the gear work on this? So this is a pure electric gear. Um, it has four separate actuators, one for each wheel. They work independently yep. uh, to reduce the chances of failure. And um, they all go through a switch in the panel. You can raise them or lower them based on what you're doing. They're all attached to a carbon Kevlar hull, which yep. is uh, inject and molded. It's really quite a complicated process and they hold uh, 2,200 pounds of displacement, which wow. works perfect for this aircraft that has a max gross of 2,000. So most ultralights only have two seats. How do you manage to get three seats? How does this all work? Originally, when we first developed it, it had two, but everyone kept trying to put a third seat in our cargo space. We didn't want it for a while, but then we figured, ah, you know, what the heck, give them what they want. So yeah. we went and we re-engineered the whole thing, reinforced it in a lot of different places, and we added the big bore kits to the Rotax engines, giving us a 20% increase in power. And that allowed for us to raise the useful load by 300 pounds to a total of 900 pound useful load. But you have trouble overloading it. And one of the main questions that I guess you would get and that the viewers would want to know, how much would one of these actually cost? So you can get into one of these um, with various options. The kit starts at 150 and that's everything. Wheels, brakes, tires, propellers, engines, seat, seat covers. You don't need to go to the store for anything. All you have to do past that point is pick your avionics you'd like and put it together. So can you give us an idea on fuel efficiency for it? That is, this is one of the most inexpensive planes to operate. If you were flying at 55 miles an hour, you're burning between three and a half and four gallons an hour with both engines combined. What? That's crazy fuel efficient. It gives you eight hours of flight time with the 28 gallons on board. Now, if you want to go a little faster and cruise, let's say you're doing 85, 90, you're going to burn about seven gallons an hour, both engines combined, which yeah. still gives you four hours of flight time. So for such a big plane, what would be the build time for one of these? So it varies based on how you purchase it. We have a uh, fast build option, which comes to between a 600 and 800 hour build. Yep. The fuselage comes all primed and riveted. All the cables and linkages are in it and it saves you 400 hours and 7,600 rivets. Whoa. If you get the standard one, it's still all almost together. You just have to do all the sanding and deburring and riveting. That yeah. is the base kit, and that comes to about a thousand hour build. So basically, it's just a really good all rounder plane. It's got floats, wheels, you can land it cross country anywhere, really. Yeah, it's quite versatile. You can fly low and slow, it's very fuel efficient, and uh, it's all around fun. So, if one of the viewers wants to buy one of these, where do they find you? They can come to our factory in Sebring, Florida, or you can just go to our website at aircam.com. Thanks for the tour. No problem, anytime.